Ladies and gents, welcome to Six Figs. I'm Kyle, and in today's video, we've got one hell of a guest here, William Laurent, who is a crypto entrepreneur. Thanks, William, for being here with me today. And you've got some like crazy stuff going on within the pipeline. I hear that you are giving a speech at an up and coming AI conference, which sounds pretty sweet. So tell us a little bit about that. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you've got grinding. Uh, in the fire right now. Super looking forward to that. Um, and thank you for mentioning it. And uh, I don't want to spend too much time introducing myself. I think a lot of your viewers know who I am, a uh, big ICP guy, totally bullish on ICP. Uh, but yeah, I'll be speaking at the Open Mesh Conference um, uh, next week. I don't have the exact time and date in front of me, but go follow Open Mesh. Uh, they are a new um, uh, tech, I would say, cohort slash thought tank that's just starting out. They're doing amazing things. They have other amazing keynote speakers. So it is sort of a big deal. Um, I uh, probably should uh, get my hair cut before I do it. But uh, hey, who's got time these days for a haircut? So That's right. uh, uh, apologies for uh, being on your <laughs> show with, uh, with messy hair. But um, I'm going to be talking about AI and music and the intersection of both. And right. I'm specifically focused on intellectual property and the challenges around IP. We're going to get into the ethics a little bit. And we'll also get into my opinions um Probably not too deep, but about the pitfalls of AI. And I think we've talked before about uh, when AI is making music, when AI is writing articles, doing all these things, we lose our collective experience as human beings, as mm -hmm. people that learned an instrument, that practice an instrument, that poured our blood, sweat and tears into an art, into a craft. Absolutely. I agree with that. And let me just kind of ask you a couple of questions about this conference. So are people able to like register online? Is this like an easily accessible conference to like view online? Is That's it free? free. Or? Oh, yep. perfect. It's online. Totally free. Um, it, okay. it is online. It's not in Great. person. Um, so if so. anybody lo listening or watching this, just check out the description or the pinned comment and I will drop a link to this AI conference. Sounds pretty sweet. So I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah, some big, uh, some, some heavy hitters uh, will be speaking, so I'm super excited. Dude, that's sick. Moving on from that, I dropped a tweet the other day, and I just wanted to get your opinion, folks. And this is one of the reasons why I value William's opinion so much is he is one of the premier journalists probably in the world that I know of, absolutely bar none. And when it comes down to, like, these high-profile cases – now, William has covered a lot of this stuff and he has interviewed a lot of high profile people with, you know, throughout his career. And when it comes down to it, I dropped this tweet the other day because Definity had a defamation lawsuit against the New York Times and Arkham Intelligence for some, you know, quote unquote, hit job news articles that I think could possibly have qualified as hit job news articles. But this same judge that dismissed Definity's case is also presiding over the FTX case. One thing that concerns me is that we might see F, uh, Sam Bankman get off lightly here. And, and, you know, if that happens, I just can't help but to think, you know, I, I hope Sam Bankman doesn't get off lightly. But if he does, it's going to like open up Pandora's box of my mindset. And I will just be thinking, Wow, is this like some sort of interconnected corruption between Sam Bankman, Arkham? Like, am I overthinking this, William? What are your thoughts yeah. on this? I'll tell you. I'll tell you my thoughts. And again, I'm not a lawyer. I I know more about um, blockchain law stuff on the um, intellectual property side. And thank you for saying that. Uh, I complimenting me on my uh, journalism. I, I'm Dude. sort of the kiss. I was the last person to publicly interview Newt Goldstein, who was the CEO for Celsius. He has not, I think, uttered anything in public since then, since that interview. That's, was that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. You anyway, are crazy. Like anyway, that, that yeah. said, um, you know, that said, I'm definitely not an expert. I would, um, I've been talking to James Kutalis, who's a person that you might want to follow that is uh, very close to this case. But we know, without getting political, we know that the Justice Department is politicized in the U.S. You're not going to get around it. I mean, it, it is pretty much at, at all levels, even the higher levels. So I don't think in this case, though, that SBF, I'm not going to comment too much on the definitive case. I am disappointed in the ruling. I'm very curious to know what evidence the judge looked at, because when you put all the pieces together, which you've done, uh, there is a definite case for uh, libel there. But 
I think, look, I think SPF is going to get probably sentenced to 50 years and he might do, I don't know, 15 to 20. Okay. Uh, I don't think that he's, you know, he's what, how old is he now? 20, 28. I, I don't think he's going to get out of jail. If he gets out of jail, it'll be around 50 years old. And I think okay. as part of his sentence too, he's not going to be allowed to hopefully even touch a computer. So, uh, you know, we'll see. I still, I don't want to say I don't have faith in, in the justice system, um, but it, this is disappointing. And, um, you know, I think in the case of SBF, I think justice will be served. It's, it's too, it's too visible. It's mm-hmm. just too visible. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know, From like an outsider like myself, I don't have too much exposure to New York. So I hear about like all these, uh, you know, stories about corruption and stuff like that in New York City. And I I feel like, you know, the honest part of me says that most of it's been cleaned up by now. But I just I I feel like the way SBF operates and all these these connections, like it could be possible there could be some influence. Um, So thank you for your. input on that because you know it was kind of like <laughs> I, I was wrapping my head around it maybe too much uh we got a tweet out of definity as well analysis from dominic williams let me let me back this up analysis from the one and only folks dominic williams on why asia is a key region for blockchain development regulatory clarity coupled with developer talent is drawing more and more blockchain organizations east now i want to just get williams input on this because he is in tokyo japan right now or in that area I've traveled to several uh, Asian countries this year. I've been to Bangkok, Thailand. I did not see one shred of crypto there except for a price tag where these people misprinted Bitcoin logo for the bot symbol. And also when I was in Japan, I take that back. I saw one store that had some t-shirts for sale that had some like NFTs or something on it. And I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. But I haven't seen like the billboards here in the US, like like you see in the US, you, you see billboards, you see arenas, crypto.com, FTX arena. You see like all this exposure to crypto here for the most part, but I didn't see that in Asia. So when Dominic Williams is talking about this, like I couldn't agree more they are some of the most technological advanced societies that I have ever seen. You speak of like South Korea, they are crazy techie, Japan, techie, China, big time tech. So this is to me a crypto stronghold that, um, you know, hopefully will give in over time. And just what are your thoughts on that, man? Yeah, so there are billboards uh, all over Tokyo, but they're contained, right? They're in certain neighborhoods that are mostly upscale, affluent business neighborhoods where they would reach that demographic. But once you get out of Tokyo, you don't see that much. I think it's important to differentiate between retail adoption, which uh, Japan is still uh, far lower than you would expect, and the actual development and what's going on behind the scenes, right? So you have uh, some of the big five. You have Deloitte and uh, Deloitte. You have Deloitte here in Tokyo that just set up like a practice where they do metaverse. They're doing blockchain. Like, so that is coming, right? Uh, the, the, the devs are there. The thought leadership is there. It's just the retail adoption is not there. So it'll, it'll be a while, but the general trend to Asia, I mean, we see it, right? The, I'll give you the, the politically incorrect answer. In the US where we're from, kids don't want to major in uh sciences right they want to uh be uh uh, sports broadcasters and give each other uh sports massages right every day like you know they don't want to they don't want to develop those easy street even though they have the aptitude to do it right um so you know i think uh, it's it's just a different uh you mentioned society society cultural i think it's a different mindset right now but the, the bigger driver uh, even over that is just the, the regulatory climate in the U.S. is we just don't know what the heck is going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen with the, with the SEC. We don't know what's going to happen with the CFTC. We don't know what's going to be regulated as a security. And now the word is coming out that the legislation and the regulation, which is right now we have regulation by enforcement, um, 
it's going to be one size fits all. So they're going to try and fit all these, you know, square pegs, proof of work, proof of stake, proof of useful work, proof of whatever, right? Into yeah. sort of like one hole. And that is going to be disastrous. And you're going to see more projects move to Hong Kong, move to D Dubai, move to places like that. The thing that holds right. Japan back right now is, is you know, I think in in maybe 10 or 20 years, they will be closer to Hong Kong as far as the adoption of English in the workplace, but it's still much, it's still very behind. I remember I was working at, at, on Wall Street 20 years ago, and the CEO of Nomura said, in five years, English will be spoken in all Nomura branches. That'll be our primary language. Well, <laughs> no, it didn't happen. It didn't happen at all. So, you know, there's still that. There's there's still the, uh, the language component that makes yeah. it difficult in Japan. Yeah. And I think we're seeing a lot of apps and things like that that will help ease that language barrier over time. For example, when I was in Japan, I relied on a lot of apps to help me navigate the landscape and things like that. So uh, hopefully, you know, Americans can learn Japanese and Chinese and vice versa. I think that the connections that could be made would will absolutely be priceless. Uh, to say the least. So one of the things I love about Coin Commit is that over the last two years, probably every single like week, they release the most active crypto projects by GitHub commits. ICP is always on this list, like ranked one to like five where it sits today. So this is great to see. And I've also told my viewers to check out some of these projects on this list, but ICP has consistently made this list time after time. So, I mean, what are your thoughts about like this image? It's just the most active crypto projects uh, by GitHub commits today. Well, my thoughts are, you know, the, the two projects that I follow closely on this, Solan and uh, Cardano. Um, I'm happy to see ICP uh, trouncing Cardano at this point. Not a huge Cardano or Charles Ooh. fan, but uh, I'd like to see us uh, uh, overtake Solana. Uh, ICP is just, a, it, it's real technology, right? And Solana still has a long way to go. It's, it, yeah. in my opinion... There's a lot of vaporware. They do have a great community. I do have a Solana bag, yeah. but you know, looking at long term, looking at the technology, we see, as you said, the commits you know, growing you know, every month. The number of blocks written, uh, and ICP's leading uh, everybody in that. So it's yeah. only a matter of time. Only a matter of time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've we've got nothing wrong. You know, with the we we've got no beef with the Solana community or anything like that, but. You know, when it comes down to the actual technology side of things, it's just it is what it is. It, ICP has an edge up on basically every other cryptocurrency in the ecosystem. And what will benefit all these other projects, which we hope thrive and survive, is that they can use ICP's technology to store data at an extremely, extremely cheap price and they can access it at web speed. So like that has such a catalyst um it adds such a catalyst to a lot of these other chains that choose to optimize icp's blockchain uh so you know it, it is what it is right. with 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 a reverse gas fee basically no gas yes. and with two second penalty right and also right. the most blockchain. so you know the list goes on and on and when you look at this cost to store something on icp versus Solana, icp is ordered still orders a magnitude cheaper and Solana is cheap. Don't get me wrong, right? But but uh, ICP is even even more. Right. Much and more. when you are trying to scale, let's just say enterprise or commercial platforms like a social media website, where every transaction is costing the user or the developers money, it adds up. You can save millions and millions and millions of dollars literally a day over a week, over a year. It just depends on what's going on. But Will, I need you to tell me about this space that you are hosting, how to win in crypto mom's advice, bonus yeah. crypto roaring in India. I want to ask you, like, what fascinates me about your, your hist you know, your personality is that it seems like you have traveled everywhere in the world. And I want to ask you if you've been to India, what it was like, 
uh, as far as like technology goes, as far as like uh, crypto goes, maybe 20 years ago, you it was the last time you visited it and it wasn't existent. But, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on this? Probably, yeah, great question. Thank you. Yeah, I've been all over the world and uh, thank you for uh, uh, talking about my space. It's uh I got my Definity shirt on here, so I do, <laughs> I do feature Love Definity it. people in ICP hubs. Um, we are open to all ecosystems, but I go out of my way to to talk about ICP. Yeah, I've been to India. It was probably seven years ago, okay. and my trip there was more, I think, of a spiritual pilgrimage, nothing to do with technology. Uh, I went to the Taj Mahal because it's um, wow. one of the wonders of the world. It's something that I've always wanted to see, so I, I was in uh, Delhi for probably not even a night and just made my, my way to Agra and stayed out there. So um, I didn't see any crypto. Uh, that wasn't really a thing back then, but I didn't, um, I wasn't on a uh, technology, uh, a technology junket. Right. So uh, as far as, as far as like visiting uh, some of these amazing tech uh, technology centers that you see in Bangalore, where they just have these yeah. campuses that are state of the art with the most brilliant people uh, in the country. I was very, very far removed from that. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. I, I, you know, over the last few years, I can't help but to think that um, India is kind of engraving its presence in my mindset as a extremely up and coming technological country within the next 10 to 15 years oh. as they continue to build this infrastructure that they have been absolutely on a roll building you know i i think that the background of uh the indian people just being in, within this tech space is, is going to complement any um, crypto projects that they touch. Uh, bar none. Let me give, so, yeah, let me let me give you some stats. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But no, uh, thank you. Yeah, because I do I do a lot of prep for these shows. I actually do a lot of research, <laughs> and we featured oh. uh, we featured one of the ICP Africa hubs nice. last week, and. If you look at crypto adoption, and this is from Chain Analysis, the research that just came out, number one country, top crypto adoption right now is India, right? Okay, per capita. Perfect. Right? You, it, it's India. Number Doesn't two, even surprise me. Number two is Nigeria. So, you know, it, it's amazing. You have India, Nigeria, um, and you have the U.S. is up there, right? I think we're in the, the top five. What surprised me is how low Canada is right now. Really? Uh, I okay. think that all changed. And uh, Japan is, is still surprising low, surprisingly okay. low. But yeah, India is just doing amazing things right now in Web3. They're killing it. They're killing it. So, um, you know, I would recommend that you guys all check this out. It's going down in like two or three days, Tuesday, November 21st at 6 p.m. Central Time. Uh, I will go ahead and post this link in the pinned comments. Uh, along with Will's AI conference as well. So it'll be very easy for you guys to find. Uh, looks like you're trying to summer the uh, the golden boy, I'll call I'm him, blockchain my, my boy. Good, my good friend, <laughs> blockchain boy. And uh, we talk, pretty much we text each other back and forth okay. almost every day, and it's usually busting each other's chops. So he's yeah. embedded right now on a huge project. Uh, I don't mm. know if he's ready to talk about it it's very ambitious and it's going nice. to be going to rock the crypto world but you know he said hey he might join but uh we're, we're gonna we're gonna we'll have michelle and uh to swap twist his arm and uh, everybody yeah. else try and yeah. summon him wonderful personality to say the least well, just incredible him. crypto crypto journey as well um so we're gonna move on to some things and we're gonna be talking a little tiny bit about the price i know william laurent man he is one hell of a musician uh, I don't know, but uh, let's talk about ICP and you guys, you've got to listen to him jam sometime. Maybe he'll bless us with something soon. Oh, wow. Well, I got my, <laughs> my ukulele here. It just happens to be in the, in the studio <laughs> with me. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. So we got ICP, folks. It's still up 24% on the year. Like you think about that. The last couple of weeks, you know, it's just been fizzling out, but we're up 45% on the month. Unheard of. We've been in a bear market for so long. It feels like I've been watching paint dry. 
for two years. Uh, when it looks like uh, ICP is going down in the tanks, it just continues to surprise us, along with a lot of these other crypto projects and other assets, which we won't talk about right now. But one thing that I do want to really uh, talk about and what was very important uh, for ICP, especially with this weekly close that just happened about uh, five, six hours ago, was that we closed on the weekly above this 50 moving average, folks. ICP did it. This is great. So I'm hoping that the next candle over the, or the next couple candles over the next few weeks really kind of hits right in this area. So I'm hoping to see ICP tr uh, trade within this $4.50 to this $5-ish region. And when we look at the weekly chart, folks, and I, was, I just want to zoom out to emphasize how important this is, because as a trader, uh, I have done uh, very well for myself over my lifetime. And one thing that I look at and trade with is the Heiken Ashi candlesticks, and I trade with the Ichimoku cloud. Both are from very uh, profitable Japanese traders that designed uh, these systems. So, Will, uh, you've got some incredible traders in your country that yeah. have created some of uh, the best uh, the, the best indicators and, and things like that that I could ever ask for. Now, the but one thing that I look yeah. for in like the Ichimoku cloud is that when the cloud gets thin like this here, it's very easy for price action to move through it. And on the weekly charts for ICP, folks, guess what? We haven't seen ICP reach above this Ichimoku cloud one time at all because it was the timing of the ICP launch that really prohibited price action from doing so. But one thing I want to just emphasize that if we get above this Ichimoku cloud, above, above this $5.57-ish cent level, I think we're in for a treat. I think that's going to be possibly a, a very uh you know, very much a turning point for price action uh let's just look at the daily right now i'm just going to go ahead here and delete this uh but right now icp folks you know it, it's just been in this falling wedge pattern and the bigger the patterns we see the bigger the moves typically not always if there's some sort of cataclysmic event that happens that can break down a pattern but icp just doesn't have any cataclysmic events happening it's building it is improving its blockchain people are loving it so when i see this type of falling wedge that dates back to you know possibly june of 2022 you know what i get very bullish about this type of thing so i think that right now we could be possibly seeing what is called an Elliott wave theory move to the upside. And I do think that we could see price right up around this $5 75 cent level, which was kind of the area that I was targeting uh, previously, you know, $5 55 cents somewhere in there on the weekly chart. But if we can see this happen on the daily, that would be wonderful. And if we look at this Elliott wave impulse, basically you can see the start of it. And I think that we could be seeing something like this. And once you see a, one, two, three, four, five, we're going to see somewhat of an A, B, C, D, E corrective wave. And that could look something like this, or we could see price absolutely blow the top off to six bucks or something like that. And we could see a corrective wave on top of this upper trend line of this uh, falling wedge. Super bullish. Also, I know I'm probably just kind of being long winded here. But one thing that makes me bullish here about this setup is we've got what's called an inverse head and shoulders. And this thing dates back to May of 2023. Will, this thing makes me bullish here. Uh, and this is why, because you can clearly argue that we've got a left shoulder, a head, and you know what? We might be 
arguing that this could be the bottom of a right shoulder. Uh, but if we see price react accordingly, you know, I think we could get up to this six dollar ish level. So like I was saying, you know, we need to just respect the patterns, respect the fluid movements of the market. I think that general sentiment is that we have perhaps and this is not financial or trading advice, but I think the general sentiment right now is that we possibly have exited the bear market and could possibly be just like dipping our toes into that warm Japanese sand on Okinawa beach and are feeling that warmth of the bull market, baby. And this is, you know, what I'm hoping we see is this $5.90 ish level or $6 level. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to wait, wait it out and see what happens with this. So that's my thought on the price. It is what it is. And we'll reanalyze this price as time goes on over the next week or so. Will, do you got any thoughts? I would say, well, you know, and you can see here that that psychological love barrier, that resistance level of five, right, is so important. Mm -hmm. We've been almost yeah. touching it. I think um, I, I think that the, the cloud that you have at 550 or something, I, I think maybe um, if we can break uh, to 525, I think we run really quick up to six. After that, I'm not sure what happens, right? Depends. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we are getting tailwinds off of off of Bitcoin. Uh, we are, I think, getting traction on CK BTC, which is uh, synthetic Bitcoin uh, on ICP. So, um, you know, I, I'm it's the charts are looking like we're going to break that through that resistance level pretty soon. And then I think we're going to have a really nice 10 to 15 percent, maybe 20 percent run. Yeah, Tell that me. would be nice to see. And it'd be nice to see the rest of the market prosper alongside ICP. I think it's going to happen. You know, this, like I said, this is not financial or trading advice. Uh, it is what it is. Things happen at any given moment, especially when we have some sort of uncooked egg, a.k.a. Gary Gensler running the sack, like all that stuff. But um, yeah, we'll knock off the price action here. I want you guys to give William a huge follow at William Lawrence three. He follows me even. Uh, somehow, but <laughs> so, uh, follow him there. And if you guys are interested in hiring or doing business with basically one of the best writers in the world, check him out on LinkedIn. He's there. Look him up. William Lawrence. I make AI and Web3 fun. Who wouldn't want to hire that guy for that? I, I mean, fun. Right. <laughs> so thanks again, Will, for being here today. Uh, we're going to be having William on probably every week here going forward for quite a while. He's such a tremendous guest, and uh, I'm very pleased to have him. So, Will, any parting words for all of us mortals that are not worthy? Uh, you're, you're too uh, too nice. Um, no, I, I love you. you know, I've been a fan uh, of your show for a few years, uh, so uh, it's great to uh, to be working with you and collaborating with you on this uh, and also outside of this. So. Uh, just uh, thanks again. I super yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, man. Anytime. So look for all these socials. Look for all these events in the pinned comments and the descriptions. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.